Hi everyone and welcome back to Chess for Charity. In this video, I'm going to show you a super cool and very instructive rook puzzle, rook endgame puzzle. So it is black to move here and win. So quickly take note of the position here. White has a pawn on f6 and they want to push this thing all the way up to f8 and make a queen. So one thing you should think about right away, and then I'll let you think about it, is that you could get a draw if you just want to keep checking with the rooks. But the question is, can you find the way to win? It's kind of hard, but I think it's really instructive. So take a second, see if you can figure that out. While you're considering the answer to this puzzle, I'd like to quickly encourage you to subscribe if you have not yet already. Half of the income that I earn in this channel goes directly to charity, so every like, every subscriber helps us out so much. Okay, let's get started here. So one thing you should note is, like I said at the beginning, you can just check and check. Right? If they just go back and forth, you'll check it's going to be a draw. They don't have to do it that way. You, you, they can run this way, but you get the idea. So let's say you take this G rook and you check them, and they go to G1. So you want to mate this king, right? Well, how do you do that? Ideally, you'd want to separate these two rooks and have one of them, I don't know, on C2, maybe go to C1, or H2, go to H1, and get this kind of double line pattern happening. So let's just say, for example, in this puzzle, you want to go, I don't know, rook D2. Maybe the idea is that you want to like move here and then eventually drop the rook in. The problem with that is the second you give black, sorry, the second you give white a free move, they're going to start checking you. And rook b6 check is kind of a problem because now you have to either interpose or you have to run to a1. If you go to a1, then you're going to have, really have to interpose because this is what's going to happen. And after all these trades, whether you take with the king or the rook, you're going to lose. All right, you take with the rook, the move is f7. They can play this one. And then what's the best move here? Rook to f6. And then let's see here, and the king is just simply faster. Okay, so you have to kind of calculate that out. So the problem with this initial variation of bringing the g rook in is they're not separated enough. These two rooks are not distant enough to do anything. So if you wanted to try, I don't know, rook b2 or c2, let's, let's try b2, that way they're not in tension here. That stops the checks, and that's a good idea, but there's not really anything they can do because rook d6 and what you can't you can't like get distance let's say you go here the idea being to go here they actually would win rook d1 check the king goes to a2 rook g8 is what the computer is saying i'm thinking rook a8 let me see oh yeah okay i was trusting my instinct there rook a8 king b3 and look just like before this will be a very similar path Okay, so what is the moral of the story here? You can't start with the G rook. Okay, so what is the difference starting with the E rook? If you got the fact the E rook has to move, that's already the first idea. So the key is, after this check, and the king goes to E1, which they are forced to go to, what is the best move in this position? If you didn't see the first move, take a second and see if you can find the second move here. Okay. So it's not so easy to spot. That's why I want to give you a second. The winning move here, surprisingly, at least to me, was rook to b2. I don't know. For me, it seemed counterintuitive because I want to put this rook on the first rank. So why would I possibly put it on the one square that's blocked by my king? Well, the reason is I now can shield my king from these checks from either b6 or b8. Okay, so what, is, what happens now? Maybe the king runs this way and then this way. Okay, let's make some simple notes. They can't go toward you because if they do, they just walk into mate in one, right? So make sure you're always aware that one of these rooks can drop down. Okay, if they run away, which seems sensible, now it's just the, the touch of this is so nice. You can play rook g, f2 check, now, if the king runs toward you or away from you, it's going to be the same result, a black win, but the details on how that is is quite important. So if they run toward you, look at what you can do. Now, 
look at where the king is, and now you can play rook h2. The idea is these are so separated that now the king can't run and attack one while the other one's giving check. So there's nothing to do here if you're white. The best move is rook c1 check. And if you're thinking this is clever, it's not that clever because after king c2, even if they play f7, you're not in time. You could even play king d3 if you want to get really fancy. According to that, that's pretty nice. Like this, rook h1 check. Do you really want to play this game? I don't think you do. Rook e2, look at this. Look at that variation. Bang. Come on, that is so cool. Okay, so go back. So if you go that way, that's the result. If you go to g1, now the king is farther away from this side of the board, which means you can make use of d2. And just like before, now these rooks are not in a position to give check, and they're also kind of, they're not doing anything. They're staring at open files, that's great, but I'm trying to threaten checkmate. And just like before, there's nothing that white can do. They can play rook c1 check, and you might, again, think maybe I can push this pawn if I'm white. No, rook b1, take, take, push, you're here. You're in time, you just go here and here. One, two. The king can't go there in a move. Okay, so quickly returning. Okay, so after the check, you run this way. After rook b2, what else is there? I showed if you go toward the king, that's mate in one. If you go away from the king, that's going to be mate in the sequence I just showed. What else is there to do? Well, if you move a rook, anywhere let's just say i don't know where do you want to move a rook anywhere you're not going to be able to do that because i'm going to have mate right here so i'm thinking what i was trying to think is what if i went to f6 well i can't do that and block because there's a pawn there so this pawn believe it or not is actually a detriment to white isn't that kind of funny because this is the one square i want to pivot on but i can't do that so the best move according to the computer, is to play the longest resistance. But any other move doesn't work either. Like I showed already, this rook sacrifice, which is a cool idea, it doesn't work. They can go for this, but it doesn't work. Importantly, you can't block here, because look at where my rook is. I can't get behind this in time. So there are, there are tricks here, like this, for example. Now you push the pawn, I can't get here, and I can't get there. So you have to be a little careful when you're calculating, but... That's the beauty of chess. It's a beautiful game. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. This was a suggestion from someone on YouTube, so thank you for that. I'll be sure to put your username in the description. I appreciate the suggestion. I try my best to read all the comments and answer as many as I can. But thank you for watching. Until next time, bye.